What's going on, guys? Five Minute Fantasy Football. We're giving an extended episode today. Got my my buddy here, Justin Henry. Uh, how you doing, Justin? Man, everything is great. Fantasy is almost here. We're a couple weeks away from the season starting, so you know it's mock draft central right now. Yeah, and so we have to get a mock in, and we encourage everybody to mock, mock, mock. You don't want to go to the draft, screw it up, and then wish you would have practiced some more. Um, and one way to win this season is to go over and and pick up a copy of the draft guide from the fantasy gods. Justin, tell us about that. Yeah, so I got my draft guide out. This is a uh, it'll be a personal one this year. Justin Henry's two twenty twenty four draft guide, but um, it's deep, man. It's heavy. I got forty pages breakdowns of every single team, every single player for all thirty two teams. Positional rankings in there, a top two fifty. We got breakout players, undervalued fades. Uh, all the rookies are broken down. Strategy for your one quarterback league, your uh, super flex leagues, draft day tips, auction uh, tips, coaching changes, fantasy playoff schedules. It's loaded, man. So um, if you're looking for a really in-depth fantasy guide and one that's just not a consensus, you've seen it all. This is it, man. Really everything you can have to win your league. And uh, make sure you go follow him on TikTok. He's always, uh, always breaking down teams. And uh, letting you uh, let you know who who to pick, who to not pick. So for this mock draft, it is a standard uh, one quarterback PPR twelve team league, two receivers, no premiums. Uh, Justin's going to take the ones. I'm going to take the 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 evens. And uh, so Justin, let's talk about Kitchen Cinco's team. Yeah, when I look at Kitchen Cinco, the first overall pick is always tough, right? Because you either have to go consensus, which is either CMC or CD Lamb. Um, or you have to kind of rock the boat and take a B. John Robinson, uh, you know, somebody, a, a Brees Hall. But I like what this person did here, Kitchen Cinco, starting off the draft with Christian McCaffrey, obviously. And then you look at the, the receivers, right? So in your two quarterback, your two receiver leagues, you want to make sure you get elite receivers. Nico Collins and DK Metcalf did a good job there. Not my personal preference there taking Nico, but I understand. Um, and then they address quarterback early, taking Jalen Hurts. So uh, for me, you know, this is – you have to decide your preference. In this draft, we saw Josh Allen go. We saw Pat Mahomes go. So I think the value was there for Jalen Hurts. But there's a ton of quarterback value in the draft, and you can see a bunch of them as uh, as they went later. So uh, it's important to note, like, identify the quarterback that you want and kind of get a feel for the draft as it's going. They were able to kind of get some, some other running backs there to complement CMC and Jonathan Brooks, Raheem Mostert. So you got an upside with Brooks. You got floor with Mostert and then filled out the receivers with Christian Watson and secure with some upside options late. So I love what they did. there, getting the floor and upside running backs, Trey Benson and Chuba Hubbard there to fill it out. So you got some rookies who have some upside, even, you know, even though Brooks is on the shelf for a while. And then later on, you got some elite upside in Deshaun Watson and things hit and then some decent depth there with Kate Otten and, and Quentin Johnson. So overall, I like the balance of this team. Really good as far as like upside. You got good stability at the top, and then some good floor options as well in case the uh, upside does not hit. Good job, Kishan Cinco. All right, I'm gonna take care of my my guy J Mark here. Uh, he went Tyreek Hill first. Uh, I like that pick. Uh, it's Tyreek or CD for the number one receiver, um, and so I, I like Tyreek over CD. Um, but I think you can go either way there if you can't get Christian McCaffrey. Uh, Sam Laporta and the set the second. Uh, Mike Evans in the third, Ken Walker in the fourth, Tank Dell in the fifth, Zamir White in the sixth. Uh, I, I really, I think it's a little early. I, I know with the tight ends, you want to get one early typically, but there is a little bit more depth now that the top has has come down to the normal. And so you you know you look at Sam Laporta, and then you look at a guy like Trey McBride or even Travis Kelsey one or two rounds later. Uh, I think I would have you know passed. Uh, because you're going to have to go a little bit lesser on your running back or receiver. Um, got some depth, you know, Tank Dell and Mike Evans and Tyree Kill. That's a good that's a good three pack for receivers. But then, uh, you know, Ken Walker and Zamir White do not offer a whole lot in the passing game. Passing game receptions are worth one and a half times what a or target is one and a half times a carry. And you're not getting a whole lot with either of those two. Uh, Roma Dunze, upside rookie. Um, we'll see if this is going to be a JSN situation or if he does enough to earn, you know, more targets than uh, we're expecting. Jordan Love, Jalen Warren. Uh, I like the Jalen Warren pick. Uh, Kate, you know, Cortland Sutton. He's a he's a value in the tenth. Matt Stafford. You know, got a little bit later on the on the quarterback, so went with another quarterback here. Um, ben Sinat is his uh, second tight end. Jaleel McLaughlin, upside pick there. 
Uh, we don't exactly know. It's kind of an ambiguous backfield in Denver. And uh, if McLaughlin's more involved, especially in the receiving game, he could be, you know, a little bit of a nice pick there. And then Jahan Dotson, I love that pick in the last last pick. So uh, let's talk about Abrock. Abrock, man, started off the draft really strong here with CeeDee Lamb, Derrick Henry, Chris Olave, Kamara, and Diggs. Uh, all those guys can be top 10 at their position, I think. Um, obviously offer a lot of floor as well. So very strong start to the draft. I'd also say George Kittle and Dak Prescott, a lot of fantasy name stays. And I think a lot of people tend to go with youth or maybe are anticipating a big growth. This player, you know, a Brock went with a lot of prime players, players in their prime, or maybe just entering or just exiting. So I like this strategy here. Gives you a lot of upside, gives you a pretty good base as well uh, for your starting run for your starting players. Um, and then when you go a little bit more to the middle, I think this is where, uh, Abrock started taking a little bit more upside. You get JSN, who could take another stride here in this offense under Ryan Grubb now uh, for the Seattle Seahawks. Tony Pollard is going to be splitting work with Tajay Spears, so could be a 1A, 1B situation, or we could see one of them emerge. And then Chase Brown offers a lot of upside as well. If he, He's been getting a lot of first-team reps here during training camp and even during the preseason game, so he's going to have opportunity. It's how much do they use Zach Moss. And then I like getting the floor, the floor kind of um, wide receivers. We know who they are. Curtis Samuel's a good possession guy, startable on a weekly basis. And then if Gabe Davis hits in Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence, now you have another flex option as well. So, um, and then you backed up. Good job backing up George Kittle and Prescott with two really solid mid-tier options in Aaron Rodgers and Noah Fant. This is a really good draft. I'm impressed. All right. Well, Team Four decided that they were too cool. They left. Wow. Um, a lot of people do that in mock drafts, so they stay out of the <laughs> chats. Um, Jamar Chase, uh, Devon a Devon Chan, uh, Brandon Ayuk, Trey McBride, Dave Montgomery, Ramondre Stevenson to start off. So he's got more of a you know like a balanced approach and gonna go with the late quarterback. Um, and I and I like that, especially we'll see who the quarterback ends up being. Um, but getting Chase and Ayuk, Ayuk's a little bit of a discount right now. Like, you don't know what's going to happen with him. And, yeah, if he goes to New England, yeah, he's probably appropriately priced or maybe overpriced. But if he goes and stays in San Francisco, this is going to be a home run value. Uh, I like Trey McBride. I talked about him earlier. Um, Montgomery and Stevenson are kind of your safer picks, like your high floor, low ceiling, when HN is your, your boomer bust. Um, HN is, you know, he's someone that could be RB1. Uh, or you finish his RB24, where you have a whole bunch of you know uh, scattered really big games, but you don't really know what to expect from him on a week-to-week -week basis, especially with them adding Jalen Wright with pretty early draft capital. Um, but again, like Stevenson and Montgomery are going to get pretty good volume, and we don't know with the Gibbs situation how uh, Montgomery could start off hot. Uh, Calvin Ridley, Brian Thomas, um, you know, funny that they you know Brian Thomas is in there to kind of. Uh, supplant uh, Ridley there in Jacksonville. Um, Ridley's another guy that is a, um, he's a number one receiver. Um, and you get him in, you get him as your third receiver. And he's a number one. Uh, I know that, you know, the offense last year was pretty poor in Tennessee, but they've done everything they can to address the 32nd best offensive line. Um, they got, you know, Callahan brought, brought his dad in Bill Callahan. who's an offensive line guru. They use the number one pick on an offensive lineman and their top free agent, other than Calvin Ridley, their top free agent pickup was their center, Lord Cushenberry. So this offensive line is looking a lot better on paper, at least than what it was last year. Um, Austin Ecker. And I, I love it. Jalen, Jane Daniels. Like I, I love Anthony Richardson and this may be a hot take. I don't care, but Jaden Daniels and Anthony Richardson, I, I think you can get very similar value and look, you're getting such a huge difference as far as price. If you're telling me that I can go get, you know, go get Jaden Daniels and get David Montgomery or Anthony Richardson and Blake Corum, like I'm going to sign up for the Jaden Daniels, David Montgomery, or anybody else you can get in that that range. Um, there's just such a different uh, value. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott here in the 11th, a uh, volume, another volume play. You know, uh, not going to be a top 15 back, but if he ends up getting, you know, 10, I wouldn't be surprised if he got 10 rushing touchdowns, you know, and 250 carries. Uh, Xavier Leggett, Mike Williams, Antonio Gibson, um, you know, again, going for some upside here, Xavier Leggett, you know, we've seen it with some of these rookies. They're super, uh, super athletic. He could hit the ground running and you, you, you play him or you can cut him week two. Um, and then Mike Williams there with, uh, with Rogers, yeah. uh, team five. Um, we don't know who that is, but, uh, break it down. 
the mystery team five start off with Justin Jefferson at the top. And, you know, it's kind of a controversial take, but I moved him up to my number one spot with the playoff schedule. We've seen for Tyree kill Jamar chase and CD lamb, both dealing with hold out, hold in situations. Um, and then Amon Ross St. Brown as well, just a little bit limited ceiling. I think Justin Jefferson can firmly move up to the number one spot, especially since we know Sam Darnold is going to be the quarterback throughout the entire course of the season. So I love the pick here, the value here at, at spot five. Then you went with running backs in two of the next four picks and ETN and Rashad White. So two guys that were in the top 10 last year, but are have lost a little bit of value this season. I think they're both uh, at a discount in drafts. I, I'm not big on, I think both of them carry risk, but I understand the value there. And then taking Travis Kelsey in the third is smart, but um, I think you could wait around on tight end. If you're going to get an elite one, you could get McBride or even Mark Andrews at a very similar price tag, maybe a little less ceiling. After after kind of, uh, you know, getting all the positions you need, then annihilating receiver, Amari Cooper, Keenan Allen, Ray She Rice. Like I like building up core receiver groups that have that can be startable in your lineups at flex or at receiver. So good job there, especially Ray, uh, Ray She Rice knowing that we probably don't have a suspension coming in 2024. Looks like it might be a 2025 thing. Good job there. Then got two quarterbacks. Interesting. Kyler Murray and Tua Tungavailoa, both injury prone, but both able to back up each other in case one does go down. So uh, I like this. Both have upside too. Tua has a lot of weekly upside. Kyler Murray has a lot of weekly upside. So I like getting two value quarterbacks here in the middle of the draft. And then to back up your running backs, you got Nick Chubb, who is probably going to be on PUP. Uh, PUP. You got Jalen Wright, who needs an injury to, to kind of be, I would say, fantasy relevant consistently. And then Kendra Miller, same thing is on the back end of Alvin Kamara right now. So I'm not really sure I like the running backs there because they're all needing some major kind of change in order to be startable. And then it comes to receivers, A.D. Mitchell and Brandon Cooks there, some good depth. You already have really good star receivers. So team five, uh, I like it. Just could have did a better job backing up the running backs in my opinion. And my, my guy Justin here, uh, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Josh Allen, Jaden Waddle, you have Jalen Waddle, uh, Joe Mixon, George Pickens, and Christian Kirk. Uh, Pickens could be a very interesting guy with this Brandon Ayuk situation. Uh, we know that there's not a lot of depth behind him right now. And in this Arthur Smith offense, he's going to get a large target share, but it's not, there's not going to be a lot of targets going around. Um, and then you have Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram. So, you know, with this team, uh, the running backs is going to be the first thing that I'm going to look at. He got Joe Mixon and Zach Moss. I like them, but you know, you're, are you going to get consistent RB one production from Mixon and then Zach Moss? How's that split going to look like with Chase Brown? I just looked at Mike Clay's projections and, and did a Cincinnati breakdown and he's actually got Chase Brown finishing higher than Zach Moss. I don't agree with that, but again, I think it's going to be more of a 50 50 split than it is going to be a, you know, 70 30. And that, you know, it's it's tough when that's your RB2. So, again, Amon Ross St. Brown has started off. Jalen Waddle, George Pickens, I love the receivers. Josh Allen, it's – it's I love Josh Allen. It's just the price is, is really tough because you're going to have to suffer in other spots. Um, then he has Evan Ingram. In PPR, Evan Ingram is a, is a very safe pick, and he's been very solid in this offense. And I think he's, you know, he – it's a real, the offense now has more vertical threats, which is really nice because it opens up the middle for Ingram and ETN to do more work. Um, and if you see him get the same target share he's been getting, he should be very, a very good value where he's at. Um, DeAndre Hopkins, and then, uh, you know, he's injured, he's already dealing with an injury, but he's not going to need him for start the season. Uh, Gus Edwards, uh, I kind of like that pick. Uh, I know Gus Edwards is not going to be a big PPR guy, but J.K. Dobbins is another guy that's going to start the season on the PUP coming off of an Achilles after coming off of an ACL. Um, so Gus Edwards is a guy where you can just get volume in that floor. And, you know, he's him and Zach Moss are very similar, you know, um, safe RB2s. Um, and then uh, Rashid, you know, Rashid, Rashid Shahid, a very uh, fun player this offseason. Uh, I like the likely pick. Um, you don't play for second place. You play to win the game. And so Isaiah Likely is a guy that he's got more upside than any of the uh, tight ends in this range. And then Khalil Herbert, uh, sneaky pick right there. Khalil Herbert, you know, if he gets traded to Dallas or gets gets an opportunity somewhere, um, but I, I don't think that DeAndre Swift's got a, a stranglehold on that backfield. I think Khalil Herbert, the way he's been, the way he played last year, the way he's been playing this offseason, uh, I'm not I'm not going to be surprised if he gets a lot more work than people think. Swift has never, you know, never been able to take over a backfield. 
Genesis Fantasy Cards is next. Genesis Fantasy, and I like what they did here, especially in a two-receiver league, just hammering running backs early. Uh, seems like a good move here. Got Brees Hall and Kyron Williams. I'm not a big fan of Kyron Williams because I think that he has a little bit of a risk going this early in the second round. Um, but I like the upside that he carries. And then you look at the receivers, right? Malik Neighbors Cup, you got some massive upside with Neighbors, but the quarterback situation, right? Taking him in the third round over established players like Michael Pittman and Debo Samuel, I'm not sure I'd recommend that. Cooper Cup, elite here in the fourth round, good job. And then you look at the other running backs, obviously we talked about DeAndre Swift and Aaron Jones. Both of them carried upside as well. Uh, we've seen them in starting lineups over the last couple of years, so when it comes to the quarterback scenario, obviously getting Burrow and Cousins, you can those are two of the safer options you're going to find. Not a whole lot of upside, but really good four plays. Both of those guys could end up being top 10 quarterbacks. I wouldn't doubt it. And then when you're looking for upside at receiver, you got two of the best options in Xavier Worthy and uh, Jamison Williams there, upside on a weekly basis. Only thing I didn't like really here is the, the tight end situation, getting Schultz and Komet, both of whom are probably more back end tight end one options. And you're going to be flip-flopping every week. But other than that, I like getting two rookies at the end just in case they hit Jalen McMillan and Roman Wilson. Good job on the upside of receivers. I would have liked to see one more starting receiver since you kind of only had, you know, one. And that Cooper Cup was really the only solid receiver you had there. Um, so I would have liked to see a little bit more solid play at receiver later on. Ton of upside, though. Yeah, and these, you know, I play a lot of Superflex Dynasty, so these one quarterback teams are are interesting. Uh, it's a little, little flip of the brain. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And then uh, Defo, Depot for show, my guy Danny. Um, he's in Hawaii right now sending trash, uh, trash trade offers drunk. Um, <laughs> Lucky for you. Bijan Robinson, Marvin Harrison Jr., Patrick Mahomes, Devonta Smith, and Najee Harris. Uh, you know, gets Bijan. I love Bijan this year. A lot of talk about, you know, him being used, uh, you know, like CMC. Uh, I, I think Bijan, you know, Bijan and Brees Hall both, you know, have a strong case to be, you know, the RB1 if, if Christian McCaffrey for some reason doesn't, you know, doesn't hit it. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr., it feels weird having him as your wide receiver one, but it also, like, we've we've seen these rookie receivers it's not like 10 years ago when rookie receivers took two or three years to bake. They're hitting the ground running, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if he meets or exceeds his cost. Um, you, getting him this early, you don't leave a whole lot of return. You know, Jamar Chase was getting drafted in the seventh. Second round is expensive, but I think it's appropriate. Um, Patrick Mahomes, early again, early quarterback. We'll see how it works. I'm not a fan of early quarterback in one QB. Uh, Devonta Smith is his, RB, his wide receiver, too. Uh, Najee Harris, uh, Brock Bowers, Caleb Williams, uh, Hollywood Brown, Dallas Goddard, and J.K. Dobbins. Again, Dobbins is the big question mark. Daniel Jeremiah said, if you play fantasy football, draft J.K. Dobbins. I don't know if he plays fantasy football, but um, you know, coming off the Achilles, coming off of ACL, I, it's just it's not going to. You're already looking at probably not him not playing till week five or six, and um, Gus Edwards seems to be the lead. Um, Jerry Judy, Trevor Lawrence, Rashawn Johnson, Ricky Pearsall. Um, you know, I, I really, I like, I do like the team, um, but I think he just went a little too crazy with three quarterbacks. Um, and just like, I think his depth is really, really struggling because of it. Um, J.K. Dobbins and Rashawn Johnson are his third and fourth running backs. Um, the receivers are good. The And then you got, you know, rookie fever with Brock Bowers and, and Marvin Harrison Jr. as your, Wide receiver one, tight end one. So not a huge fan of this team, uh, but, you know, again, and maybe you can trade some of these pieces, but uh, it's uh, one or two injuries away from disaster. Yeah. Axe Harding. Well, Ax Harding is up now, and I like getting A.J. Brown and Drake London. A lot of people are not in on Drake London because he's disappointed, but this is the year with Kirk Cousins, and we know that Justin Jefferson was – Averaging 12 targets a game with Kirk Cousins last year. Like, if Drake London gets anywhere near that, he's going to crush his ADP. So, I like A.J. Brown, Drake London there. Uh, getting James Cook as your, your RB1, especially over a couple other, I think, a little bit better established players in Jacobs and Pacheco, even Alvin Kamara, Joe Mixon. Um, I, I'm not a fan of that pick there in the third round. T. Higgins offers a lot of upside there before – Cooper Cup, Devontae Smith is a little high, though, for a guy that we've seen kind of fluctuate. But 
Uh, I like the upside for T. Higgins this year, especially if Jamar Chase does happen to hold out. And again, Lamar Jackson and Pitts, obviously you're getting immense upside there at your quarterback and tight end position. Both of those guys can finish at the top of their position. When it comes to the running backs there, Javante Williams, Devin Singletary, you get good floor. I think a lot of people are down on Javante Williams because of the, the potential for him getting cut. It seems like he's he's eased a lot of those concerns and looks to be the RB1 there. Devin Singletary, obviously Tyron Tracy came up with the injury, so Singletary is a little bit more secure in his role, at least for the short term, until Tracy is completely back on the field. And then finishing off the draft, getting more receivers than Jacoby Myers, Dobbs, and Douglas, some safer options, not a whole lot of upside there. And then Justin Herbert and Will Levis, again, three quarterbacks is not necessary in a single QB league. I'd rather see you load up on other positions. Um, maybe one of those guys is cool, but not you don't need three of them. So overall, I like this team. It was uh, I think I liked it earlier on better than later, so I would have liked to see this draft be a little stronger at the end. Yeah, like one thing I do, if your waivers are – like some teams, they lock their waivers until after week one. If you don't do that, like I'm not drafting a kicker. I'm not drafting a defense. I'm drafting two extra running backs and in case someone gets hurt. I did it with Zach Moss last year. did it with James Conner a few years ago. Like things can happen. And then all of a sudden, okay, everybody's healthy. Everybody's good. I drop somebody, pick up my kicker right before the game on Sunday, and we're good. But like, yeah, you're, you're really loading up your spot with guys that you can only start one quarterback and you're already locking up some bench spots. So you're going to be having some tough decisions on when waivers, when waivers, uh, the first waiver hits. Yeah, especially if you go um, quarterback early. There's no need to take three quarterbacks because you got to trust the guy you draft. 100%. Uh, so uh, Jordan Cantaloupe always good for uh, always good for some some good stuff on Twitter. I love when uh, he makes it to the group chat. Uh, Puka Nakua uh, starting it off. Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, DJ Moore. CJ Stroud, Zay Flowers, Chris Godwin, Jordan Addison just got two pretty heavy running backs with some good workload potential and just smashed the receivers. Um, TJ Hawkinson, that's the first questionable pick. Um, you have the change of quarterback. You got the, the late injury, multi-ligament knee injury. Uh, I just don't feel very good about him being my number one. But Pat Fryermuth is there, and I actually do like Fryermuth this year. I think you know Arthur Smith, the Atlanta Falcons led the uh, they they led the NFL in air yards to the tight end position last year by a large margin, and we know that he's you know he obviously spent a lot of time uh, carving up plays for Johnny Smith last year, um, but there's not a Johnny Smith type of player, at least not to to my knowledge, on the uh, Steelers. You look at a team that does not have currently. Another, a, a number two receiver. You have Van Jefferson, you have Roman Wilson. We don't know who is going to be their number two target. And the number one indicator for a tight end one finish is being number one or number two on your team in targets. And then if you can get someone that's going to get a ton of air yards, that's where you get the upside and the ceiling where Pat Freymuth could be a top 10, top eight guy. And you're getting him here in the 11th round. So I think Freymuth buys you enough time for when Hawkinson gets healthy he can play. So I, I like that move. Ty J Spears. Um, and then you have uh, Tyler Lockett, Josh Downs, Ty Chandler. Uh, I think my only beef with this team, I, I think he he fixed the, the Hawkinson thing. But uh, Ty J Spears is your three. Ty Chandler is your four. If Barkley or Jacobs go down, you're, you're going to have an RB2 by committee. And um, that's going to be tough. But you got so much receiver depth. You could probably package and trade somebody and, and do something. I uh, I kind of like that team. Uh, next up, we got Coach Steve, who went Gibbs, Wilson, Pacheco, and Andrews here to start the draft. Uh, so shirt up the running backs and then got Garrett Wilson there to, to lead the receiving core, got Terry McLaurin and Jaden Reed later. So great three options, in my opinion, at receiver. Anthony Richardson and Mark Andrews uh, will be elite at their position, especially if you hit on Anthony Richardson. Like I think that the teams before him got value on Lamar. But Anthony Richardson is the kind of player that could be Josh Allen-esque. And to get that in the fifth round, I think if I was going to take a quarterback, I want them to have that kind of upside. So good job there. Uh, and I talked about the receivers, but getting Ladd McConkey offers a little bit of upside in PPR leagues. Not sure what that Chargers offense is going to look like under Greg Roman this year. 
Um, it looks like the third running back is Brian Robinson, who has what's considered a starter's role now, but under the air raid offense for Cliff Kingsbury, if Austin Eckler can look anything like his former self, maybe we're getting a value on him. Um, and then Blake Quorum offers a ton of upside. If Kyron were to go down, he's been injury prone in the past. So I really like Blake Quorum uh, as a pick. And then you back up a risky Anthony Richardson with Jared Goff right before that. I think that that's the perfect complement for upside and floor. Jared Goff has a lot of games indoors this year and has been a consistent top 12 guy in his time in Detroit. And then finishing off the draft with Zach Charbonnet, Dontavian Wicks. Um, I feel like you're getting good depth there. So overall, I think this team did a good job of balancing out like some upside, some safe plays. Good job. All right. And I, I got my team here. I went to Vontae Adams, Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman, Debo Samuel. Um, so strong at receiver to start off. Got my you know, kind of anchor, anchor, you know, uh, running back. A uh, Don Kincaid, then James Conner. I don't know why I went D David Njoku here, to be honest. Uh, I, I don't love that pick. I probably, you know, would have, if I redid this, went with a Devin Singletary or somebody just to give me some more running back depth. And uh, I think it did hurt me by passing, uh, passing on that. You know, even if Brian Robinson uh, or Tony Pollard, you know, I, I like the running backs that, you know, and I had to get a, a quarterback. So, you know, it, it definitely hurt me doing that. If you get one of those top tight ends and then you double down, it's almost like, you know, like maybe I was afraid that I didn't like the Kincaid pick and I do. And so I don't know why I went to Joku there. Um, Deontay Johnson at receiver, uh, Brock Purdy. It's my guy. Uh, Keon Coleman, uh, Jerome Ford. I think Jerome Ford is, is a, a good player. I think he's a good value right now where you're getting him. I don't know how fast Chubb is going to come back. And if he comes back, what does that look like? He's an older player player with a knee injury history coming off a significant knee injury um, with multi ligaments. And then uh, Josh Palmer, you know, I know that everybody loves McConkey. I would not be surprised if Palmer is the number one target getter there. No, it doesn't offer a whole lot of upside, but you're getting him so cheap. And if he ends up getting 120 targets, 115 targets, you're getting him super cheap in a PPR format. Marshawn Lloyd, uh, all it takes is one, you know, one Josh Jacobs injury, and this guy is a, a one of the top plays. Um, so uh, again, I, with this team, I think running back depth is what really hurt me, uh, and part of that is taking the Joku where I took him. All right, what do you think uh, about like what is there a team that stands out? Like this is the your favorite team. Um, probably a team a a Brock was a really strong team in my opinion. And then that was probably the one team that I saw and I was like, Oh, this looks like a, a league winner. Just when you're, when you're able to go so strong early on, like Alvin Kamara was a top, he was top 11 back and he missed four games last year. You got Derrick Henry, who's almost a lot to be a top 10 guy. If he stays healthy, you pair that up with three number one receivers on our team and well, debatable, obviously for Stefan Diggs, but CD lamb Olave and then Diggs there in the fifth round Kittle and, and Dak, like to me, just addressed all areas. This is a strong team. All right. So let's talk about the quarterback position. Um, you know, when you talked about earlier, when you're building your team, you kind of want to, you know, put out a blueprint, you know, I'm going to get a, a strategy. And that's one of the things about mock drafts is you can try different strategies. What happens if I go tight end early? What if it happens if I go tight end late? Do I like this version better? And so um, the quarterback position, you talked about kind of knowing I'm going to go middle or late quarterback. And these are the kind of three or four guys I'm targeting. And I'm going to build my team or build my house around that. So let's talk about the quarterback position. Yeah, I think this is one of the harder debates because there's so many people that emphasize like you got to go, you know, early quarterback. You have to go early quarterback and get a game changer. But when I look at the quarterbacks this year, it's such a deep position, especially because we saw a lot of guys get injured last year. So it messed up where people finished. Right. So we had like Dak, Jordan Love, Brock Purdy in the top. Pat Mahomes was out. I think CJ Stroud missed a couple of games. So he ended up being down. Joe Burrow missed a couple of games. So this it's loaded at the top. Kyler Murray only played half the season. So when I look at the quarterback position, you find guys that typically could be top five guys or maybe we would draft as top five guys that are going outside of the top five. So I think this is at least 12 quarterbacks deep, at least. And I would feel comfortable starting guys like Jared Goff and Kirk Cousins both were on, you know, Kirk Cousins obviously before the injury were on top 12 pace last year. Jared Goff finishes the top 12 quarterback, and he goes outside the top 15. I really like getting guys like Trevor Lawrence, Jaden Daniels, uh, Brock Purdy, Jordan Love at the back end of your draft in single QB leagues or towards the middle in this one as opposed to taking early quarterbacks. 
And I think there's just so much more value in getting an elite quarterback or an elite wide receiver, elite running back. As that position is like once you find an elite guy there, that's harder to replace than a quarterback in this year's draft, in my opinion. So I like taking early tight end more so than taking early quarterback if I'm going to pick one. And I never do both. Never will I do quarterback and tight end early. I think it's it leaves your team a little bit too dry um, just over the course of it in 12 team leagues. Yeah, well said. And then as far as running backs, you know, redraft is still going to go running backs early, but it's starting to get a little dynasty feel with how many receivers are going early. Um, you know, if you draft a quarterback in the first round and he doesn't get hurt, it typically is a good move. But just the risk of, you know, any of these, any of these, you know, running backs not working out, you know, as far as injury is higher than the receivers. Uh, but you got Christian McCaffrey at the 101, Brees Hall, B. John Robinson right there in the middle of the first, and then Jameer Gibbs, and then Jonathan Taylor right there at the 201. And so you have – that's your you know top five by all ADP. That's your top five guys, in majority of your ADP. And you're getting them – you know, you have to pay first – you know, pretty much first-round price for them. Saquon Barkley, Kyron Williams, Travis Etienne, Devin H. Ann, Derrick Henry, that's the next group of guys. So you're looking at, you know, about nine running backs that are going to go. So almost all of your RB1s, quote unquote, are going to be first or second round price. And then you have Pacheco, Jacobs, and Cook. Then the next round, you have Mixon, White, Kamara, and Walker. You can see where it's starting to tear out. You're not like in the past, you would see almost all green blocks in the first two rounds. And so when you look at it, you look at a guy like Pacheco, if you were to, you know, were to filter this by points, Pacheco is, he's expected to score more points than Gibbs, expected to more points than, than Jacobs, more points than Cook, and he's going in the third round. So if you wanted to like go receiver, receiver, let's say you went, you know, uh, you know, you went AJ a. Brown and, and Drake London, um, you know, he just missed out on Pacheco there. Um, but Pacheco going at the end of the third, you know, that's a good value when you're talking about his comparison to, uh, you know, a Derrick Henry, how much, how much of a difference is going to be between those two and how many, you know, um, how many, uh, you know, picks in between. Then you have this, uh, you know, Jonathan Brooks going early. It's the earliest rookie running back. You have Montgomery, you have Swift, you have Harris, you know, Swift and Harris have been guys that have been drafted high and disappointed. And now they're, dropping down the boards, but they're still pretty highly priced when you look at these tight ends and other receivers you're getting in this range because of how many receivers are going early that their depth starts to fall off where you're drafting wide receiver twos and wide receiver threes on their team. Um, you know, running backs, you have Raheem Mostert. He was a top guy last year, and he's uh, getting drafted in the seventh now because um, everyone's expecting the points to shift to Achan. Mike Clay has it projected where they're pretty similar. He said that he has them both projected to, to finish as around RB20. And so he's got the, the point split, and, and the ADP has it the other way, where A-Chan's getting the majority of the points. Um, they look at the running backs. I think there's some cheap bell cow guys. You know, they're they're not on good offenses, and that's the, that's the reason they're this far down. But Devin Singletary, Brian Robinson, um, you can see them getting a lot, a, a lot of um volume, and that's why they're you know good values in the eighth and ninth round. But I do like the running backs in this eighth, ninth round. You know, Trey Benson's a good and high value handcuff. Tony Pollard, Jalen Warren. These are good running backs that you could get kind of later if you were to pass on running back and let's say, like Justin said, get an early tight end. Um, and then everyone at the end, you know, you get in these double digit rounds, you're typically going for high value handcuff guys. None of these guys are, are projected to be starters, except for maybe Zeke Elliott and then Jerome Ford to start the season. Uh, what do you think about the receivers? Yeah, the receivers, I think there's a clear cut like six. I think Tyreek Hill, C.D. Lamb, Chase, Jefferson, St. Brown, and A.J. Brown, no matter what order you put those guys in, I think that's the consensus six. And then I think after that is where a lot of the question marks come in. I personally think Devontae Adams could be a part of that group, but there's a lot of people concerned about the age. And I think that's where this next about seven to about 24 range of receivers gets kind of wild. You have receivers who are either in a split. You don't know who the 1A, 1B is. Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, N Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs. Um, you know, you, you got other uh, Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. 
You have other guys who are younger, haven't proven it yet. Drake London, Michael Pittman, guys that we're expecting to take the next leap. Chris Olave, just there's a lot to unpack here in this range. And I think you can find value if there's a specific type of player you like. I think you can find value all through this round. Malik Neighbors, I've seen him in mock drafts go in the third round. I've seen him go in the sixth round. Cooper Cup, I've seen him go in the second round. I've seen him go in the fourth round. I've seen Mike Evans go at the top of the second round in the middle of the third. It all just depends on who you value and who what your league mates also value, right? So uh, to me, you can find a ton of value at the receiver position, especially when you're talking about your low-end wide receiver ones or any of your wide receiver twos. When it starts to get to the wide receiver threes, I think there's a clear tier break around wide receiver 35. So after your Amari Coopers, George Pickens, Keenan Allen, T. Higgins, Calvin Ridley, after those guys go, your Terry McLaurin, Zay Flowers, it really starts to tear break, man, because there's – you, you know, you talk about guys like Christian Watson, Brian Thomas, JSN, like these, there's question marks with all of these younger receivers we haven't seen yet. So a lot of them offer upside, but I would say the last, like after, you know, Ridley, Chris Godwin, Jaden Reed, there's so many question marks and it feels like a completely different receiver upside. So I've noticed in this range, you'll find people taking like Jamison Williamson, uh, Jamison Williams early. They'll start taking their rookies early, whether it's it's Worthy, it's Lad McConkey. But take your shot down here. And I would say if you've already established a clear three, you want to have a fourth one who at least has some floor. You want to find another one that has upside. So there's a lot of people that say you, you can only you know chase the win with your bench. But I also think you need to be able to have capable replacements in case bye weeks happen or injuries happen. Yeah. And, you know, check your settings is one of the number one things you want to do before joining any league. Anyone ask kind of like, what's your, what are your, your number one tips? Check your settings. Cause if it's three receivers, that changes a lot of things. And then if it's full PPR, or half point PPR, that changes a lot of things as well. And like, if it's half point PPR versus full point PPR, you might see some of these running backs go up and some of these receivers go down. Um, tight end position. Um, uh, like I said earlier, you know, um, Travis Kelsey came, came back to, I would say came back to earth. Um, his, his production was so crazy that you had to take him in the first round. And when I say came back to earth, he's still really, really good. His production last year would have had him as the tight end one the year before. And it was only 0.1 points away per game than him being the tight end one. And he started the season off with an injury. I know there's everything going on with this back, this uh, receiving room again with Kansas city. We don't know what's going to happen with Rasheed Rice. If he's in it suspended or not, Xavier, Xavier worthy. We don't know how he's going to translate to the NFL. Could be a Deshaun Jackson kind of a player. And he could be more of a boom and bust guy, or maybe we see more, you know, we've seen some of these younger, you know, smaller players like tank Dell actually produce consistently. And now Hollywood Brown is hurt. Um, but you, you got more of a balance. So you got Sam Laporte in the second, Travis Kelsey in the third, McBride and Andrews in the fourth, and then the fifth, you got Dalton Kincaid, and then the sixth round, Ferguson, Kittle, Bowers, and Pitts. And then in the in the seventh round, you got Najoku and Ingram, and then there's a drop. Goddard, he's really fallen, fallen down as far as his ADP and expectations. Is he someone that can bounce back a little bit this year? PJ Hawkinson. Big unknowns with him. And then Dalton Schultz, he's been great three years in a row. Dallas, Dallas, and Houston, he got the contract. But now Stephon Diggs is there, Nico Collins, Tank Dell. Is there enough to go around for Dalton Schultz to be that guy? I don't think so with where, you know, if he's being if he's being drafted as a top 10 guy, I don't think you're going to get a whole lot of return. If he's getting drafted where he's a little bit later, then maybe. But I don't trust him as my tight end one the way it currently sits. Um, and then to Justin's point earlier, it's really hard to go early quarterback and early tight end. So like Herbalicious is a good example. He's still got one of the top tight ends in Evan Ingram, but he, yeah, he went with an early, you know, early quarterback. Then you go with the guy, J Mark, who got Sam Laporta early. Then he balanced it out with Jordan Love. And so it just, he, there's not a lot of teams like the coach Steve kind of went early with, with Andrews and Richardson fourth and fifth round. And you see how it affects the team build. I, I think he was able to make out pretty fine with that. But, you know, again, with the tight ends, if you want to get one of the top guys, you're going to have to get them in the first seven rounds. And, you you know, you can wait till the third or fourth round and get a guy that's 
think just just going to be as good or better than Laporta. Um, but you can't wait past the seventh round if you want to get one of the top guys. In, in my opinion, there's a pretty big cutoff after uh, you know after those top ten. Um, any final thoughts before we get out of here? No, man. Every draft is different. I think there's a lot of value this year. People people get hurt by last year's numbers. And so you'll see some players fall and then they get excited about new talent. So you're going to see that rise as well. So treat every draft different. Make sure you mock draft just like my my man Dave here has, uh, has done here. But we got to make sure if you go into your draft, be prepared because a lot of these drafts could come out different. Draft with different people, do a bunch of mocks, try different settings out and go win your league, man. All right. Well, hey, everybody, make sure you give Justin a follow. Justin, where can they find you? Justin Henry with a three instead of an E on all social media platforms. And check for the Justin Henry show on YouTube. I do daily content on there. So, uh, yeah, appreciate you having me on. All right. As always, good luck this season.